Hey everybody, this is Taylor coming to you from Florida. Um, I made a video yesterday um, talking about um, what happened two years ago and how I miraculously lived through that and came back brain intact even. Um, somebody asked me did I have a near-death experience while this happened. The answer to that is yes, I did. Um, I don't really talk about it all that much because I'm surrounded with Christians and most of them don't believe in near-death experiences, so I really don't really have any reason to talk about it. But I will tell you guys what happened. <sighs> when I did what I did, I thought I was going to bed and going to take a nap. I had a really bad flu bug and I thought I'll just take a little extra medicine and it'll make me sleep through this flu. So I laid down, and what I thought happened next was part of a really bizarre dream, but in reality, it was happening. There was a light. I know, hardy ha ha everybody sees a light, but this was not a tunnel with a light at the end. This was, it was all encompassing, beautiful, bright, brighter than the sun, warm, but comforting, warm, not hot. Brighter than the sun, but you stare at it, and it's like, it doesn't hurt. And, and it sucks you towards it. I mean, you want to go and be enveloped in it. Every cell of your body, down to the tips of your hair, feels just so good. I mean, it's like you just can't remember ever not having this, but you don't ever want to let it go. And then I saw a man and a woman. They were both wearing a white robe with long sleeves um, down to their feet. They both had short gray hair with kind of timeless faces. Like, you know, you thought they were elderly, but their faces kind of didn't have very many wrinkles. I did not recognize them. They were not from my family. Um, and they had their arms outstretched to me. Although I didn't know them, I wanted nothing more than to go into their arms. And I felt myself floating that way. Not walking, but floating. And as I was getting closer and closer, the more great it felt, the more, this is right, this is wonderful, this is what I should want, this is, oh, this is happening, oh my gosh, this is real, this is awesome. That's how I was feeling as I was floating that way. Just a tremendous sense of awesomeness. And then I heard my dad, who I hadn't heard his voice in years, in real, you know, in life. Um, he called out, and he does not, he's not cool with the trans thing, and he's always called me baby girl. So he called out, baby girl. Well, that made me stop because I hadn't heard his voice in so long that to hear him call me made me stop. I mean, I stopped. The, I stopped floating towards that light and those people. And I heard him call my name out again. And I made a conscious effort to go... Sorry about that, guys. I uh, had the camera set up differently. Anyway, when I heard my dad call my name, I made this conscious decision to go towards his voice because I had not seen him in so long and um, I was curious as to why he was there. I did not know I was in a coma. Hell, I didn't know I was floating to heaven, which is what it felt like. I didn't know. I just thought it was a really wonderful, bizarre, awesome dream. But then, as I fought to get back to my dad's voice, the, the beautiful light just faded away and the people, they, they faded. And then the next thing I knew, I woke up gagging on a tube, and it was eight days later. Um, I know it was real. I, I don't have any doubt in my mind that it wasn't, you know, I just know it was real. It it was too, too detailed to be any kind of dream or hallucination or anything like that. And what I gathered and got from that experience was that I don't have anything to fear about death. Before that happened, I did fear death. You know, because nobody comes back to life to tell you what really happens. But I had my own personal experience with it, and now I know. Death does not hurt. Um, and it's, it's nothing to be afraid of. Now, I'm not telling you guys to go jump off cliffs or kill yourselves or anything like that. I'm just saying you don't have to be afraid. Make sure that you know you're right with um, with God, and and just don't be afraid. There's something so much awesome, much much more awesome after this disgusting Earth. Uh, <clears throat> what a fight that was! 
And you know, my dad saved my life. He hates he hates me. I don't think he likes me at all. I mean, the fact that I'm trans, he doesn't talk to me at all anymore. He I haven't talked to him in years. Years, years, years. He came he, all my family was called down because I was dying and he was there. But by the time I woke up, you know, I was trying to claw back to his voice. He had already left and went back to Illinois. He does not accept me being trans and so he's not in my life anymore. But dad, if you're watching this or if anyone else in my family that has a connection to dad, have him watch this video and let him know that he's the one that saved my life. He's the one that I went back for because if I had not heard his voice at that specific moment, I would have succumbed and went into that light quite happily. And I can't wait for the day when it happens again because, I mean, naturally though, not, you know, when I, maybe when I'm old, okay. Um, next time I ain't turning back. No, I'm not. And um, there you go, you guys. That's what you wanted. My near-death experience. Peace out.